Hi everyone, my name is Blake Lindsay. This is Jill Tibbles. Hi. We certainly want to say welcome to the Inspire Podcast. It's a Ziegler podcast that we do free every single week. And we want you to tell everybody about it because we're excited about this. We're going to do a video podcast at least once a month. Mr. Ziegler is here today and I'm excited about this. I want to ask you, Mr. Ziegler, why is your faith so important? Uh, that's probably the easiest question anybody will ever ask me. Uh, I was broke and in debt. My career was going nowhere. But on July 4th, 1972, I committed my life to Christ as a result of an elderly black lady spending the weekend in our home. Well, I've always been honest. I've always had character. I don't believe anybody can claim an unpaid debt uh, that I owe them. I've always uh, felt I had good character. God blessed me with a strong voice and, you know, a sense of humor, which is always important. <laughs> uh, but the reality is my career was at a standstill. Uh, literally, when I got an invitation to speak in those years, we had a family celebration. That meant I had a, you know, a payday in front of me. Well, from the day that uh, I found my faith in Christ uh, and started expressing it publicly, uh, my career absolutely exploded. I've not had to solicit a speaking engagement in uh, over 30 years. Mm -hmm. My phone just rings. People are desperately hungry for the truth. My speaker friends have asked me repeatedly, how do you get by with that? I said, well, let me tell you something. Let me explain it to you. Uh, over 90% of the people in America believe there is a God. Why on earth would I risk offending over 90% of my audience by not talking about what <laughs> they believe? Good point. Friend, now that is not good marketing. As no, a matter sir. of fact, that's <laughs> not marketing at all. So God has blessed that effort. And uh, I have kind of a role model to go by and that was our founding fathers. Our founding fathers were educated for well over a century in this little book, The New England Primer. Now, in this little book, that's where they got their education. Over 90% of all of the educational thrust was of a religious, moral, ethical nature. By 1950, the percentage was so small, you couldn't even measure it. And by 1960, it was anti-God, anti-Christian. Now, all you got to do is look at the corporate scandals and the government scandals and the violence that's on in our society, the immorality that's on in our society, and you will understand why the Founding Fathers were so insistent on forming public schools so that people could learn how to read so they could read the Bible. Mm. They instinctively knew that God's possibles were infinitely greater than man's permissibles. That's what I discovered in my own career. God's possibles have certainly been better to me than man's permissibles. The founding fathers knew that we needed a governing authority. Now, you know, we've kicked God out of just about every place. That is, some people think he's not there, but he's everywhere. You can trust me on that one. Yes. But let me tell you that uh, when you really look at what the teachings have been, it makes a whole lot of difference. And when we look at a governing authority, can you imagine a baseball game without an umpire? Man, not at all. That would be chaos. And so if we trust this governing authority, I tell people, you know, the Supreme Court has ruled that there are certain, uh, uh, you know, places you cannot even display the Ten Commandments. Ironically, if the Supreme Court justices did not obey the Ten Commandments, they would be disrobed, disbarred, and imprisoned. You just kill somebody on the job, even if you're a Supreme Court justice, and see how far you go. You kill somebody in your family, uh, and see how far you'll go. This is a biblical principle I'm talking about. And when you follow biblical principles, chances are dramatically better that you're doing the right thing. So I validate things psychologically, theologically, and physiologically before I verbalize, verbalize them, write about them, or record them because I am confident that the information is correct. It works for everyone in their lives. You know, Zig, one of the things I've appreciated about you through the years is that you've made no secret to the fact that you've had tough times in your life. And I want to know how your faith has played into helping you through those tough times. Well, 
you know, my Bible it gives me a lot of uh, information along those lines. And uh, I believe one of the little verses that says, this too shall pass. I don't know whether a preacher said that or whether that's in the Bible, but I believe that. We go through cycles. We have our ups and our downs. But when you're down, we need to understand is, and I certainly understand this, that the God of the mountaintop is also the God of the valley. And the good news is that most of us, when we're on the mountaintop, we say, hey, man, I'm doing this good. When we're in the valley, we say, Lord, I need help. And that's where the difference comes in. He yeah. always hears the prayer of a believer. How do you explain to people that occasionally, you know, you, you get a person that says, why did God let that happen? You know, referring <laughs> to the war, the terrorism, or something negative in your life. And how do you explain that? Actually, the explanation of that is uh, very simple. Uh, God did not create us as robots. He created us for a purpose, and that purpose was to worship Him. Yes. And if He had created us and made us have everything just right, what would be mm -hmm. His need? And so a loving God put us in a position so that we could grow and mature and have a fulfilled life in every way. And so one of the things that uh, I have really hung to is the Romans 8:28, which says that all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called to serve according to His purpose. Now, that does not say that everything that happens is good. It says God takes our foul-ups, and we have all lots of them, and use those foul-ups to take us up. That's where my faith comes in. That's very encouraging, and I, I can definitely relate to that. I want to thank everybody again for being here today, and it's, it's a pleasure to interview you, Mr. Ziegler, and, and uh, we're doing this on video once a month. It's a free Inspire podcast. I get inspired every time I get to be the MC, and it's just a big pleasure. So please tell a friend, tell all your family about this, because we are having fun, and Mr. Ziegler is teaching me things that I haven't thought of in a good long time, and I'm glad that I am. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you next week. Ziggler. 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 Inspiring true performance.